we're afraid of all of you know all of all of the doubts that's in our heads the untruths the notions and perceptions that we borrowed from somebody else and held on to and made it our truth in in actuality they're just lies but getting lost in in thought and really getting to the the core of who you are and how you feel about yourself is is to your benefit not to your detriment because once you recognize those negative core beliefs now that you know that they're there you can do something about it you can do something to turn those you know negative core beliefs into something that's positive you know so you can have a clear vision <laughs>
you know, a, a thing word for, for the year, something that they're constantly reminding themselves of to keep them motivated throughout the year. So what is your one word for 2020? I'm interested in that. Let me know in the comments. If you are catching this on a replay, you know, please, you know, participate. You know, participate. Let me know what your one word is. Um, do hashtag replay so I can know that you, you know, that you caught this video on the replay. So let me know because I always loop back around to answer questions and respond to all comments. So if you have a one word, please let me know. Um, for me, I don't even have my one word yet because to be completely honest with you, my year, it obviously it hasn't ended, but I just... <laughs> It's just been so much going on in the background that I haven't shared with you guys that I don't even have my one word yet. So I'm going to wait until closer to the end of the year to really have to, you know, to figure out what my one word is. And when I do, I'll definitely let you know. Intention and my phrase into the unknown. Okay. Into the unknown. My word is intention and my phrase is into the unknown. I love that. I love that. Because, you know, the unknown is something that a lot of us are really scared of, but that uncertainty is where all of, you know, our prosperity and abundance lives, mm -hmm. is in that uncertainty zone, right? So let's thank you for sharing that, Tiffany. So we're going to go ahead and get started because I want to be respected of your time and not have you guys for too, too long on tonight. So the first step that we need to do in order to got to watch a Frozen 2. So, okay. <laughs> I would definitely have to do that. I'm going to have to watch Frozen 2. Definitely going to have to do that. And so the first step for gaining 2020 vision is to discover your truth. That's the first step. You have to discover your truth. And discover your truth means to become aware of your true self. And that's the person that God created you to be. And I know I may sound like a, a broken record because I'm always telling you to discover your truth and to accept who you are, you know, become aware of your true self. This is something that I'm always talking about, right? Because I'm a self-awareness coach. So, you know, I sound like a broken record, but you guys, imposter syndrome is real. This is a real thing. And because we are still suffering from imposter syndrome, I know that, you know, there is still some belief there that we don't quite know who we are or um, there's still some, some doubts in our minds. So we really need to understand who we are and whose we are, right? So we can really get clear on our vision, all right. And the perfect way to really figure that out is to answer this simple question. And it's not a rhetorical question. Like this is a question that I really, really want you to answer. I want you to answer the question, who are you? Like, seriously, I want you to answer the question, who are you? Write it down and answer the question. Right now, this may seem like a super uber simple question, but this is a really deep question that a lot of people are unable to answer. And this is a very important question that we need to be able to answer in order to have, you know, clarity on our vision, because it doesn't matter whose vision it is, all of our visions, no matter what it is, no matter how different our visions are, because my different, my vision is different from Shalanda's, my vision is different from Tiffany's, and Tiffany's and Shalanda's visions are different, right? But there's one common element, and that's you, that's self, right? That's the person who the vision belongs to, right? Every vision belongs to a person. So if you don't know who you are, how are you able to really get clear and understand what your particular vision is? Does that make sense? So I need for you to know who you are, embrace your true self, be confident in who you are so you can adapt your vision for your life and not necessarily adapt someone else's vision for your life. That is super, super important, right? And you know what I'm talking about, you know? Um, adapting you know someone else's vision for your life you know if you was that person that um i don't know say you was a track star in in high school and you only went out for track because that your mom was a track star in high school right so you went out for track or maybe you work in you know in a career because 
that's the same career that your dad is in and your dad dad was in. It's a family tradition to work in that particular field. That's you adopting somebody else's vision for your life, right? Or maybe you're just simply chasing a dream that simply is not yours because you're fighting to have this, this, this connection with somebody. You just want somebody to just, you know, accept you and be validated, you know, and validate you. If that's something that you can relate to, you know, raise your hand in the comment section. Let me know. Raise your hand in the comment section. This is me raising my hand because that last one, that's my truth. If you guys know my story, which you, which I'm pretty sure you do, right? Because I'm transparent about my story. You know, for a long time, like half my life, you know, I've always wanted to be the next Perry Mason. I wanted to be the next Perry Mason. And chasing that dream, it didn't belong to me because what I realized is that the only reason why I wanted to be Perry Mason is because my mom loved the Perry Mason show right and the reason and to get further into it once i did the inner work i realized that being perry mason that was my way of fighting to have that connection with my mom because i wanted that mother-daughter connection i wanted my mom to love me just a little bit harder so i figured in my mind that if i pursue a career to be just like perry mason that i will be able to build that connection with my mom therefore i'm chasing a dream that didn't even belong to me does that make sense does that make sense? So now you understand why it's important for you to know who you are. And when you answer that question, like the answer to that question shouldn't be just wrapped up in rainbows and unicorns. Like, I want you to really dig deep, like talk about the things that you know, are not so good about you, right? Because that's a part of who you are as well. If you're someone who is definitely afraid of public speaking, let's just throw that out there. If you're like definitely afraid of public speaking, then that's who you are, right? Write that down, that's a part of your answer. If you're someone who, you know, has a, a, a disease that's not necessarily curable like sickle cell, that's who you are right? That's a part of who you are. Now, it doesn't necessarily define you. Those things and circumstances don't define you, right? It just lets you know that you have special tools on your tool belt, right? That you can tap into to help you to overcome that thing that scares you into paralysis. It just means that you have extra tools to work with than the average person. That's all that means, right? So when you're answering this, this, this question, I want you to, you know, answer it from a, I want you to have a well-rounded response. And also when you answer the question, who are you? You should definitely talk about, you know, your, your priorities and your values as well, right? I want you to talk about all these things because I really want you to understand. I really want the point to be driven home that your journey is going to look completely different from the next person's journey because I really want you to understand how you are different from the next person. All right. So the first step of gaining 2020 vision is to discover your truth. The second step is to define your truth. So to define your truth means to identify what gives your life meaning. What gives your life meaning, right? This is something super important that you need to that you need to figure out because the thing that gives your life meaning is going to make you look, sound and act differently from what's considered to be normal. You're going to look, sound and act differently from the person that's next to you. Right? So it's important for you to figure out what gives your life meaning. And this is something that we all kind of struggle with because the last thing we want to do is to be different from what's considered normal, right? Because we just want to feel validated and accepted. We just want to feel, you know, feel loved, right? Because depending on what our circumstances in this world or our personal experiences are, we probably like those things. So, you know, we, we want that close connection. So being different and set apart from someone else is something that we fight with every day, right? All the time, right? But we have to identify what gives our life 
meeting. We have to. And, you know, another reason why I think we, we fight being different is because we've been taught that being different is something that's that's bad and it's unacceptable and it's difficult and that is so far from the truth. It's so far from the truth. It's so far from the truth. If you're anything like me, where you believe in a higher power, like I truly believe in God. And so because I believe in God and because I'm a, um, I'm a Christian, I believe that the word is, is truth, right? And because I believe the word is truth, um, I believe in Jeremiah 1, 5. And Jeremiah 1, 5 states, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you was born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's the NLT version of that verse, Jeremiah 1, 5. When I read that verse, did you catch the key phrase in that verse? Did you catch the key phrase? The key phrase is, I set you apart. So for me, when I hear those words, that translates to me that God purposely and intentionally made me different from everything and everyone else. Purposefully, he did that. It wasn't by accident. He didn't make a mistake. He with intention made me different from everybody else so if we believe in god we believe in a higher power which means that we believe in jeremiah 1 5 then why are we not able to embrace our difference and operate in our purpose why is that <laughs> like i really want you to take a moment and to really like think about that for a second like get lost in deep thought and really like answer that question, right? Like take a moment and, and sit back and like think about it, you know? You know, getting lost in deep thought, no, 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 think about it. That's something else that we don't tend to do because we live in a society where it's, we just always on the go. Everything is just so quick. We gotta have everything instantly, right? I mean, we, you know, are always on a go and we always working so fast that we even take shallow breaths. We don't even take a moment to take deep breaths and just release, right? We're so busy, we can't even be present in the moment and enjoy what's going on in the moment and be grateful for what's in the moment because we always busy and on to the next thing. And another reason why I think we don't get lost in deep thought is because we are afraid of knowing or realizing what we truly feel about ourselves. We're afraid of all of, you know, all of, all of the doubts that's in our heads, the untruths, the notions and perceptions that we borrowed from somebody else and held on to and made it our truth. And in, in actuality, they're just lies. But getting lost in, in thought and really getting to the, the core of who you are and how you feel about yourself is, is to your benefit, not to your detriment. Because once you recognize those negative core beliefs, now that you know that they're there, you can do something about it. You can do something to turn those you know, negative core beliefs into something that's positive. You know, So you can have a clear vision for your life. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Right. So for those of you who are just joining in, because a couple of you just joined in, we are talking about how to gain 2020 vision in just three steps. I've already talked about two. First step is to discover your truth. The second is to define your truth. And then the third step that we're going to talk about is live your truth. Live your truth. And live your truth means to have the courage to embrace all aspects of who you are and present that person to the world. Have the courage to embrace all aspects of who you are and present that person to the world. Now, live your truth pretty much ties in, it's a tie-in for all three steps, right? Because 
in order for you to really have clear vision, you have to embrace who you are and understand and identify what gives your life meaning. Because otherwise, if you're not able to even do those particular two steps and then present yourself to the world, then your vision is going to always be vague and unreachable because you're not even willing to do the basics, which is to know and embrace who you are, accept your difference and your purpose that sets you apart from everybody else, and then having the courage to go out into the world and do that particular thing. If you're not even able to do those things, then your vision is going to always be vague and unreachable because you're not willing to accept who you are and embrace who you are. And I know that's not the case for you tonight because we're here and we're having this conversation. We're having this chat. So the fact that you're here and you showed up or you're watching this replay, it lets me know that you want the clarity. You desire the clarity, right? You just need a little courage. You just need the courage, build the courage that it takes to implement these three steps. So how do you gain the courage? How do you gain the courage to do that, right? I want you to think about it for a moment. How do you gain the courage to do that? If you catch this on the replay, let me know in the comment section. You guys, let me know in the comments, how do you build the courage that you need to perform these three steps that I gave you? And, you know, just think about the first thing that comes to your mind, because I don't want you to overthink it, because this is not rocket science. <laughs> the answer is pretty simple. It's not rocket science. I don't want you to overthink it. So the first thing that comes to your head, like, that's, I want to know what that thing is. Let me know in the comment section. And the reason why I say don't overthink it, because that's something else that we always do. We are always overthinking stuff. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I just need to talk about myself because I know for sure I'm always overthinking some stuff. <laughs> and we just need to get out of the habit of just overthinking things, right? So the answer to the question is, what, how do you gain courage? The simple answer is action. Action. That's the answer. Actually, it's the answer to, you know, a lot of the questions or a lot of issues that you have that's um, preventing you from um, doing that thing that scares you so bad that it actually scares you, scares you into paralysis. It's action, right? Because the more action you take, the more your confidence grows. And when your confidence grows, then that's when you have the courage to do something bigger than what you've done before, right? Because taking action lets you know that, number one, you're not going to die for doing that thing that you're so scared of. You're not going to die. You're going to survive it, right? You're going to survive it. And then if you're anything like me, if you're, if you're like me and you actually move afraid, then once you get through that thing that, that you was too scared to do, once you get through it, you realize that, you know, you killed it. Whatever that thing was, not only were you able to get through it, but you got through it with excellence. Better than what you could have thought you could have done, right? At the end of the day. I know that's how it is for me. Every time I'm too scared to do something, when I do it anyway, I'm just like, oh, hell. What was I scared of, right? But it takes you doing actions in order to have that revelation, right? Because if you're not taking action, then how are you going to manifest the vision that you even have for your life? It's just not going to happen. If you're not willing to take action, nothing is going to happen. Because pretty pictures on a board is not going to magically make your vision come to life. It's not. You're going to have to take action. So whatever you do, please don't walk away from this particular chat thinking that, oh, you know, th that was some great advice. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know those th 
those three steps and then just go about your business. Like, I really want you to sit down and I really want you to do the work. So if that means coming back and watching this live again and taking notes, please do so because clarity takes work. Gaining clarity takes work. I just, we just talked about action. It takes work, right? Because you just sitting and just like meditating for 20 minutes, it's not enough. Because once you get the, the download or directions that you need to do, you need to go and you need to do the work. You need to go and take the action, right? In order for you to have something different, you have to do something different. It takes action. Other words, you're going to be in the same spot that you was, you know, this year. You're going to be in that same spot next year. And I want something different. You want something different because that's why we're here and we're having this chat, right? So let me do a quick recap of, you know, how to gain 2020 vision in three steps. The first step is to discover your truth, which means to become aware of your true self, who God created you to be. And then I want you to sit down and really answer the question, who are you? And when you answer that question, who are you? I want you to go beyond the career that you're working in. I want you to go beyond the business that you own, go beyond the nonprofit that you started, right? Go beyond being a mom and being a daughter and a sister, you know, uh, a wife, a friend and a lover, like go beyond that, right? Because you are more than those things. You are more than the titles that you, that you, that you, um, that you have. You are more than that. So really it's a simple question, but it's a deep question. I really want you to you know, really tap into your inner core and answer the question, who are you? The second step is to define your truth, which means to identify what gives your life meaning. What is, what sets you apart from everybody else? What is that thing? I want you to identify what that thing is and embrace it and tap into it. All right. And then the third step is to live your truth, embrace all aspects of who you are, and present that person to the world, right? And living your truth, like I said, it encompasses all of the steps because knowing who you are and identifying what gives your life meaning requires you to be able to embrace all aspects of who you are and then go out in the world and be that person, your true self. So your vision can come to life right? And then you can naturally attract the blessings that are tied to you when you are operating in your purpose. Things become a lot clearer. Things tend to fall into place a little bit easier. It doesn't take away all of <laughs> the struggles and issues, but it makes things a little bit easier, right? When you're operating in your purpose. All right. So those are the three steps to gain, you know, 2020 vision. So you can have that clarity going into um, the new year. 